Hey, Josh Zering, Jay Zering Studios. Today I'm going to show you how you can enhance just about any image using a gradient map with any assortment of colors. I'm going to show you three different images and three different color schemes that I'm going to use. So check it out. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go down to the bottom right hand corner here create new fill or adjustment layer. Click on that, click on gradient map, and you'll be greeted with whatever colors you used as a gradient last, usually. And I'm gonna click on this, and for this one, I'm going to cool it down a little bit, so I'm gonna select a, a blue. Uh, you have to experiment with this, it could be any shade of blue. And then I'm gonna leave this one black. Now that looks pretty ridiculous, and uh, that's, not, that's not how you leave it, so don't get scared. <laughs> Don't run away from this tutorial. Now you select your layer blending mode. And this could be any of them. A lot of people have favorites uh, for blending modes, what they use, what they try first. Uh, I'm gonna start with soft light and leave it at 100%. And you can see that's really, really blue in comparison to how it, how it was before. And it really isn't too warm of an image. It's just the warmest I could find. I'm usually pretty dental with my white balance. But uh, this isn't really to correct it. It's just to set a certain mood or maybe to use it like a filter, like you would use a filter. Uh, and you can also use overlay. I'm going to use overlay and then drop it down a little bit, or actually drop it down a lot, and we'll see what 30% looks like. And that pulls it down just a tad. Now the purple on, on uh, her wings and outfit pop a little more versus uh, kind of looks pink here, even though it's not. Now it's like a lavender. And you can also, this automatically creates a, a mask, so you can also paint out what you don't want, like on her skin. If you think that's too blue, just take it off with a with a layer mask. And there you go. So here's before and here's after. Next I'm gonna go to this panorama here. Because same thing, select the gradient map, and this time I'm going to go with warmer colors. I actually have a gradient preset here that I call brown. And I use that sometimes just, not so much to warm it up, but just to, it just adds a little bit of clarity to it for some reason. Uh, it does, it affects the shadows and the highlights in a way where if you load up a black and white photo, uh, the dark colors will take over, depending on you can reverse it. The dark colors will take over the dark, you know, the, the black and grays, and the light colors will take over the lighter color you select. So here we're gonna, we're gonna use beige and brown and I'm gonna do overlay on this one and show you the before. Now before there's, there's a lot of blue in the sky, a lot of blue here on the water, and it's not so much when I click it on. I'm gonna see what that looks like reversed. And that gets a lot darker. And that might, that might be what I would choose here. Drop it down the whole way and then bring it back up again. And it kind of just adds something. It adds kind of a color depth to my eyes here. It adds like more depth, more dynamic range to me. And that's just, to my eyes, that's what it looks like it's doing. Now I'm gonna move on to this. And I wanna make this more blue because it's a winter scene. It's, uh, there's snow and everything. It does kind of, this one I will admit kind of looks bland. It's, it just looks like a snapshot. So what I did here before I turned it on was I used three colors for this. I used uh, kind of a seafoam, maybe teal color, uh, blue, like a medium blue, and black. And I reversed it because of the order of colors I did it for no particular reason other than I did it backwards. So I'm gonna turn that on, and you can see it looks a lot colder now. So you can use this to warm photos up, to cool photos, if you don't wanna mess with the white balance. Uh, it does it a different way, it's not the same as white balance, definitely, but it will change the colors like you're changing the white balance but I don't normally use it to that. Sometimes I use it to warm up, like skin up, like skin tones. Uh, that la This last one here, uh, I load another gradient map in here and I use my brown preset. Reverse that. And I use soft light. It does a different thing than white balance to skin tones because it's not white balance. It's not adding what you would usually see like oranges and yellows unflattering colors to skin tone it's adding either beige or brown or, or a gradient of the beige and brown and that's a lot nicer 
too, you could actually just use the mask here and only paint it in on the skin. So you could alter the skin tone only by using a gradient map. There's, there's a lot of things you can do with gradient maps. I'm a big fan. Uh, what you can do with uh, composites is a gradient map, even if it's a soft light and you have it on like 30% or less, it pulls all the different elements of your composite together by using the same toning for from the darks to the lights. So it's a nice way of blending something that kind of like if you put together a couple elements that didn't have the same white balance, which is a really common thing, if they had like daylight balance versus like 3600K, uh, they're not going to look right unless you alter the white balance. But what you can do is throw a gradient map on it and it will kind of make everything look like it was shot with a similar lighting with a similar temperature. So what I did here was cool this down and you can go further with that by, I have it on soft light at 100%. That's usually pretty extreme, but soft light with a gradient map isn't real extreme. Overlay on the other hand, you can see everything turning really, really blue. So you can paint in and paint out. Like the part where you notice the most here is on the road, I could paint that out. And uh, that's basically how you use a gradient map. There's a million different uses for it and it can improve just about any photo, even if you barely put it on, if you just put it on lightly. Let me do one more thing to this picture now that I deleted the that gradient map. Actually, let's leave it on black and red. Now that looks pretty, uh, pretty gnarly, but if you go to soft light and you can see it's still at 100%, but you can see it's adding kind of what it's doing to the shadows is almost like a curve where in the in the darker shadows here there's a kind of a dark haze to it almost like a film quality to it and it's adding red but it's not a warm color it's just adding red it's it's enhancing this red brick and this red dog house here this red fire hydrant and it's just kind of adding a red hue to everything and you can do that with any color like any color you can think of you can even use these weird ones here I don't really recommend this one, the chrome setting, but still, if you're going for something crazy looking, this might be what you're looking for. And that's pretty crazy looking. So that's basically all there is to it. It's built into Photoshop and it can enhance just about any image, whether it's a landscape photo or a shot of the clouds is a real good one to add some blues to, um, portraits, anything you can think of. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tell your friends, keep creating and keep it awesome. Join me on Patreon.com to take part in special rewards like Priority Question and Answer, Lightroom and Photoshop presets and actions, BTS videos and photos, previews for upcoming content, and even suggest ideas for tutorials. And also you have the option of being credited for your support of Jay Zaring Studios, which is really cool. Check it out at Patreon.com slash Jay Zaring.